name is Cora Harrington and I'm the Lingerie Addict and I'm here for part two of our introduction to corset series with Lucy of Lucy's Corsetry. Hello again, Lucy. Hello. Uh, in this installment of this video series, we'll be talking about the materials of a corset. What are the key components? What should you look for when buying one? Um, just so you can kind of know how to tell the real from the fake. So my very first question to you for this part of the series is, what are the key components of a corset? I have a couple of corsets here that I can actually demonstrate, uh, the main components of a corset. So um, I'm going to speak very generally here right. because there are a lot of different types of corsets, but most corsets tend to have a cotton lining. So this is the strength fabric and this is what prevents the corset from stretching out or warping. And uh, it is the basically the pattern of this is what's responsible for giving you the shape in a corset. Um, it may or may not have a fashion fabric, which is just the pretty side, and it also contains steel boning, which maintains the vertical tension. So when you tie the corset very tightly around your body, it doesn't collapse and wrinkle on you. And then in the back, every corset also has grommets and laces, which helps to basically pull the corset smaller. And in the front here, it may or may not contain a steel busk. But those that do have uh, a busk in the front, it will always be steel. Uh, it will never be hook and eye. And I, am I segueing? Or? No, yeah, okay. I, actually, let's talk about that since you brought it up. So okay. some people kind of confuse <laughs> the front closure or the closures of a corset. They think like a hook and eye is just as good as a busk. You see a lot of, of mm -hmm. hook and eye corsets. They're really bustiers, um, that which are sold, I mean, sometimes even as tight lacing garments. So. Why does the busk matter and what makes it different from the hook and eye closure when it comes to a corset? Okay, well, I'll start with what the hook and eye looks like. And uh, it's very, very small. Uh, very many sets of it's these It's like what small. you have on the back of a bra. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, it's, for one, it's a little bit time consuming to do up something like this. And secondly, they're sewn directly onto the fabric. They are not anchored onto any bone. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you look at a busk here, it's basically the larger cousin of the hook and eye. So it has uh, loops on one side and pins or knobs on the other side. Mm -hmm. But the most important part here is that it's directly anchored, it's riveted onto mm -hmm. a bone. So uh, when you do this, basically all the pressure or the tension of the fabric is going to be supported by that bone and it's going to prevent these loops and knobs from ripping right out of the fabric. So not only does this help to control the tummy in the front and mm -hmm. help to prevent any uh, bowing outwards or any uh, flesh spillover, but it is going to uh, contribute to the strength of the corset overall. Right. Well, something I'm just noticing from the girdle in your lap and the corset is that mm -hmm. the hook and eyes on the front of, on the front of that girdle are just very flimsy. Like you can bend them and yes. twist them around and exactly. that might not be what you want for the front of a corset. Exactly. Let's talk laces now. Um, you, you touched on laces um, briefly just now, like that's something that a corset will, will always have. Can you tell us more about the types of laces? I mean, what's the difference mm -hmm. between, I guess you have another corset there that has looks, looks like a shoe lacing yes. in the back of it. So kind of how should you know if you want a ribbon lacing versus, you know, a shoelace or what are the like the pros and cons of different laces? So for the laces here there are a lot of different types of laces like mm -hmm. you said. Uh, so this one is a ribbon lace and ribbon laces can be very strong and also they can glide well through the grommet so that you don't have a lot of friction when you're pulling on it. Now that's a, a pro for it but you should make sure that any ribbon that you use is a double-faced satin. So how you would know if something's double-faced satin is that it's very shiny and the same texture on both sides. And this helps to prevent any stretching of it and it's basically a stronger weave overall. Oh. And uh, another pro about this is that it has a fairly low profile. Mm -hmm. So if you want uh, laces that are not very bulky, that if you want to wear a corset underneath clothing, then ribbon would be a good way to go. Now, some of the cons about ribbon is that it has a tendency to run and fray if it mm -hmm. catches on any splits of the grommets. So you may find that you have to replace it more often. In contrast, I have this corset here that has more of a shoelace style mm -hmm. and it is made from nylon. This one is a little bit more stretchy. Some people might uh, be quite frustrated when they're tying up their corset because the laces are stretching mm -hmm. as opposed to the corset actually closing in the back. Uh, it does tend to stretch out over time and then it'll be fine mm -hmm. once you've actually worn it in a little bit. But this one is more resistant to fraying and catching on the grommets. Uh, it's also very resistant to breaking.
so this one is, it tends to be, I guess, more of a workhorse mm -hmm. and less pretty than the ribbon. Okay, That's, that was very insightful, thank you. My last question, uh, you said that corsets should have steel bones just now, and yes. a lot of people sell corsets uh, with plastic bones. So mm -hmm. could you maybe break down for TLA readers why a plastic bone corset isn't that good, isn't that good of an idea, and why steel boning makes such a difference uh, when it comes to corsetry? Sure. A lot of people tend to be uh, intimidated when they hear the word steel boning because mm -hmm. it, it seems very industrial, it seems very hardcore, but in reality, I, I consider it far more comfortable than plastic boning. One of the uh, caveats about plastic boning is that they have a tendency to warm up with the body and curve to the body. Now, sometimes you, you might want that curve uh, just for uh, just a, a, a costume or something that yeah. you're not going to tie very tightly. However, when you're getting to the, re the reductions that these types of corsets are, are uh, giving you, the plastic boning just does not have the strength to maintain that vertical tension and it's going to bend and kink and that can be very uh, uncomfortable, possibly painful for the wearer and I, it has been known to cause bruising and injuries. Whereas with steel boning, it's a little bit more resistant, it still has flex, but it doesn't warm up with the body and become softer over time. So it's always going to maintain that vertical tension and just give you that smooth curve without collapsing on itself. Well, that makes perfect sense. Well, thank you for breaking that down for us. Uh, this is the end of part two of our introduction to corset series with Lucy Corsetry here at Orchard Corset in Wenatchee. And uh, come back in just a minute for part three. Thank you for watching.